to each. And Ronnie, do you want to kick it off, please? And how's the, uh, the mood and the camp and squad ahead of the, the return of the league? I think we're ready to go. I think the last two weeks been a lot of frustration that we've waited for it, certainly on my part as well. Um, but I see a group that's uh, chomping at the bit to get started tomorrow night. What do, what do you need to see tomorrow night from your, from your team? I just need them to play the best version of themselves. I need to see a team that's got a lot of cohesion, that's aggressive in its pressing, aggressive in its forward running. And I want them to show the same quality that they showed at the weekend against Bayer Leverkusen. And I think that will, will give us a good chance of uh, winning the game. How ready do you feel, Michael? Obviously, you've, you've come in at this break, a short period of time. How ready do you feel to get started? I think if you ask every manager, we'd all want more time on the training pitch and, and more time with the group. But on a personal level, I feel overly ready for the game. Um, and I can't wait for tomorrow night. I think it's going to be a hugely proud moment for me. But it's more important that the fans and the players are aligned and, and we put on a strong performance at home at Ibrox. We spoke uh, when you unveiled as manager about trying to close the gap to Celtic. You said it's just about winning the next game, winning the next game. How important is it to start with three points on Thursday? It's hugely important. It's hugely important. I think the players need to just go out and play at the level that I know that they can. I thought they showed a good indication that they're moving in the right direction on Saturday, albeit it was in to buy a Labour Cousin team that's behind us in their, in their preparation for the second half of the season. But I thought we showed a good face. Everyone was involved. So I've only got to pick 11 out of that, and they've got to go and put on a strong performance. You're right in saying it's just about winning the next game, and then all we can control is ourselves. And if we win games of football, then it gives us the best opportunity. Michael, how's uh, Conor Golton? You said he might be back in training this week alongside Ben Davies. They've both trained. It's obviously, you know, Conor's not been available for a long time. Been shorter amount of time as well compared to Connor, but I wouldn't say they're absolutely 100% for the game, but they both have returned to training, which is the good news. And it's just now about getting them ready to play 90 minutes. I think the amount of subs you can have and also having to, the ability to use five in game, it gives me an option to, to work them back within games rather than just outside of the team. And presumably with the, the number of away games you have, that's a big boost to have, especially Connor Golden back uh, for, for that run of games. Yeah, definitely, because Connor in, in the previous time I was here, played 99% of the time and, and was a really strong part of our team. Obviously, vice-captain has led the team at different times and been hugely successful here, so I think he's a, he's a bedrock of our team and the quicker we can get Connor back, we'll, we'll make a stronger Rangers for sure. I think we spoke about putting a lot of ideas in the players in your know, last few weeks. Can fans expect tomorrow to see a completely different team to the one they've been watching this season? Or is it about drip feeding it to make sure you don't change too much? No, I think they'll see a team close to, to in style really to what they were used to when I was here under Stephen in terms of the way that we want to play and to play close together and play front foot attacking football. Certainly there'll be elements of Gio and he staff as well within that and I think you'll see over time that evolving but my ideas haven't changed too much to when I was here previously. Um, and I think it's just about three and one or two players up. That always happens when a new coach comes in. That's nothing against the, the previous management team, but it almost shuffles the pack when a new coach comes in and changes the system a little bit that you're using. And I'm hoping to see that renewed energy in one or two. And I think it's important for them that they, they <coughs> show that as well. Just on Malik and Brian Kent and Lowry, the ones you talked about, the creative ones, is it a bit exciting the fans again? And Unleashing those players on Thursday? Yeah, for certain. I think that they know what I think of them. I think young Alex is ripe now. I think he's right there and at the stage where he can make a breakthrough. With that comes a lot of responsibility because he's got to dislodge someone that's obviously a little bit older, a little bit more streetwise, if you like, a little bit more experienced in the league. But I think he's ready and it will be very close to being in the team tomorrow. Just to clarify, Michael's going to go to the bed, is it then a squad? Well, they're available for selection. I'm not going to give you the squad today, but they're available for selection, both of them, yeah. Uh, talk of Leon King signing a new deal, can you tell us about that? Yeah, there's positive signs on that. I think you hear something in the next couple of days with him and, and one other player as well signing new deals, which I think is really important for the club. I think when you look at the squad, we've got some players under 25 or 25 and below that are really important to the future in terms of what we want to do but also the style of which we want to play and Leon's one of them so I'm delighted. I've seen him, obviously he was part of the first team squad when I was here previously but he's grown up a lot in the, in the last year. It's important we manage him well because I think he's got potential to kick on and be a very good player for, for Rangers and, and for the national team obviously as well. The other player you talk about, is that a senior player or is it one of the young, young players? One of the seniors, yeah. Michael, 
confident are you that you could turn things around quickly even yeah. in terms of the teams you lose? I just need to win games of football. More, not just myself, the players need to go out and win games of football. They're more than capable of it. You know, a few weeks ago I visited a game and, and they played against Aberdeen who were third at the time and they were very, very comfortable and strong that day in winning that game. You wouldn't have foreseen the, the, the stuff that would, would have happened after that. So I think we just need to win games one at a time, be consistent in improving, be consistent in our training and improving there and, and that, that, the rest of it will take care of itself. I think we'll look to improve and I would say that no one's safe because I don't want to bring any fillers into the squad. I only want to bring people in that can start in the first 11. So I'll have my own opinion on that, which might differ from maybe the opinions one or two months ago. It's important I give everybody an opportunity to show, but it's certainly I want to strengthen the squad. And in every single position, I think we can improve the squad. Like most managers would say, I don't think anybody's safe here. I think there's some players that are that are important to Rangers, but at the same time, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't hassle in terms of uh, bringing someone in that I thought was stronger for the starting eleven. I don't want to bring any fillers into the building. Now, how does it feel now that you're you're back, obviously in familiar circumstances, familiar surroundings, but a different role? Does it does it feel different? Is it like putting on a pair of comfy old slippers, or is it completely different? A little bit of both, to be to be honest. It feels very comfortable in and around the building, in and around the city, in and around this squad. That's for sure. But you all being friendly at the moment, so that will change with results. We'll see how it goes. I've, I've mentioned that to my staff. I'm aware of the responsibility this job brings and the expectation. I wanted that, so I've come, come back with real open eyes and, and really optimistic. I'm certain that uh, I'll have some tough days, that's for sure. The group will, but it's important that we move forward with a clear identity. And, and it, it would be a matter of uh, my staff learning that on the job, if you like. And with that expectation that you mentioned, what does success look like for you this season? Do you have to win something? Not necessarily the league because you're starting at minus nine, but a cup or something tangible? Do you need to win something? Yeah, of course. And I have to change the feeling around the club. I need to change the, the valuation of our players. is probably not where it should be right now. Some individual players because of how the whole team's perceived. The team's the vehicle. The club's been in a fantastic place maybe five or six months ago going into the European final and 12, 18 months ago win the league unbeaten. The player's valuation was much higher in those moments. I think at the moment it's not good for anybody associated with Rangers. The fans who feel it the most, the players as well, and then myself and the staff. So I think between now and May, I need to change that. I need to change that feeling. I need to change the way that we play on the pitch so it showcases the players more. And ultimately, that the only way to do that is winning. I'm just to push you on the, on the senior player that's about to be signed, you and Ryan Kent. It's no secret you're, you're very close. Is that the player you're alluding to? No. Michael, just a, a quick word on Hibs themselves. What do you make of them? Do you think they've changed much since you left? I've not seen a great deal, if I'm honest. I've only watched. I've been focused heavily on ourselves and the way that we perform because I think a strong range of performing at the level will be enough in most domestic games. That's my honest belief that we have to play at our level and we need to focus on ourselves. I haven't seen a great deal. Obviously, I'm aware of Lee from down south uh, and the job that he did at the club he was at there and I'm aware of three or four of their players. I think they've got a decent squad and they probably feel they're underachieving at the moment. Matt? You've obviously had a, a decent break in getting to know the team. Uh, in terms of the injuries, have any of the, the longer term guys have been any improvement, any news from that? I think you're probably looking at the, the start to mid-January for one or two of those guys. You know, you're looking at, say, a Tom Lawrence or you're looking at a John Souter. We've had some pleasing news on both of them. Kamar Roof had been back in training, but we just need to take it easy with him. You know, there was a chance for him playing at the weekend, but it's me wanting people back and getting the best version back. I don't want people back to break down within two weeks. The most important thing is when I look at the squad or the sum of the whole squad, it's important I have all of them players available as soon as possible, but for a sustained period of time. So I've asked the medical and sports science team to focus on that, not focus on the next four days to push a player out there that's not quite ready. I don't think that's fair and it's not what I want either. I just want people back in a good place so that over time people can, can judge this squad fairly and give everyone the opportunity to, to, uh, to improve our situation. Guys on the Zoom, David. Michael, see the, the press conference uh, where you were introduced, you spoke about not only having to win, but having to win in a certain way. Could you tell us a wee bit more about that? 
And I think we have to play as a big team because that's what we are. Uh, we are a big team. You know, we have a lot of expectation in terms of our fan base and, and a lot of coverage on us. So when we play, we have to take the ball. And it's important we play in a style. It's important to allow our attacking players firstly to play in the 11 and then secondly the freedom to go and express themselves and I think if we do that then I think I'm sure we'll play uh, a style of football that's, that's nice on the eye and ultimately wins football matches. And with so many games in such a short period after this kind of stop and start, is it important that you get the opportunity to retake the squad over the next two weeks? <laughs> Yeah, I certainly feel that players are chomping a bit to have an opportunity and, and obviously whoever I pick tomorrow, there'll be nine players on the bench who are unhappy and maybe one or two outside the squad. But they have to wear a <coughs> shirt in training. No, nothing's given. I'll only rotate if I feel that someone adds value to the starting eleven. Um, I certainly want to play with two strikers at times and you should expect that in the coming games that we play with two strikers. So. That's a, a little bit of a hint of what's coming. I want to put more strikers on the pitch, more goal scorers, and I want to play up around the other team's box. So uh, I've given away a little bit to you there, Steve. Stevie? Hi, good afternoon, Michael. Um, just to, to follow up a wee bit on what David said about when you first came to the club, you said you were going to speak to the players individually, look at everybody and make sure they still wanted to be here. Have you been happy with the the response you've got from the team. Absolutely delighted. Absolutely delighted with that. I think it's a it's a group that was hurting when I came in. I spoke to a few of the senior players, but also the young ones as well. It's important <coughs> I've got a 360 sort of feedback from everyone, staff as well. There's been a few things that have changed since I was here before, so it's important I didn't come in and just assume that everyone was in the same place mentally and, and, and the same place physically or, or just in general with their football. So it was important to listen to everyone, but I've been delighted with everyone's application so far. I certainly see a group of players that are, are focused on being here and, and, and doing well for the club and each other. Stevie, uh, Go Radio, question. Yeah, thanks. Um, so a lot of managers who take over midway through a season might need to kind of make gradual changes to the style of play, but obviously coming in during this World Cup break, do you think you can make kind of your own brand of football uh, introduced a bit more thoroughly? Yeah, I've got a head start, haven't I, I'm, I'm off, off any other coach that would have come and had this opportunity because I know the players and, and they know me. So I think you'll see, you'll see some, some changes quite quickly in terms of structure and how we press and how we want to defend and, and certainly maybe one or two players where they are unable, unable to go in, in possession as well. So I think in a normal sense, yes, and certainly I'm not overlooking the fact that I've come in mid-season not had a pre-season, but I do have the advantage of having worked with these players for probably 600 sessions and 200 games over three and a half years, which was only 12 months ago. So there's certainly just uh, a, a part of us uh, adapting more quickly maybe than a, a coach that came in cold. Thanks, guys. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry I was just say... Yeah, go ahead. Well, it'll only make up a nine-point gap if we win and something happens to the other team. And at the moment, all we can take care of is tomorrow. I think everyone's clear that tomorrow, uh, every game at this club feels like it's must win. Every week feels like a big week. Um, I never in the three and a half years I was here before, every week we kept saying this week's a big week, next week's a big week. So I understand it. The players need to perform at their level. If they perform at the level they're capable of and they, they, they show nice aggression in the way they play in and out of possession, they'll give themselves a good chance. And I'm actually excited to watch them play. I'm hugely optimistic to get back to Ibrox tomorrow and the fans be behind the team and hopefully we keep the fans uh, nice and warm rather than sitting there on their hands freezing cold.